today's adventure, we review the Avios Spitfire 1450mm Warbird. This is a huge RC plane and we have some epic FPV footage coming up. For the quality of this plane, it is reasonably priced and it comes in two colour schemes, this green colour and a desert colour, and we're going to have both linked in the description box down below. We'll be doing two flights today with this Avios Spitfire, one with a 5000 milliamp battery and then a second flight on a 3300 milliamp battery. But before we get out and fly this beast of an RC plane, first we're going to give a quick overview. Starting at the nose of this aircraft, it comes with a massive three-bladed propeller that is very scale, much like this whole entire plane is. It has a brushless outrunner motor and an 80 amp ESC and powering the system will be a six cell LiPo battery. This plane comes as a plug and fly which means you do need to provide your own receiver, transmitter and battery. The receiver we've gone with is the Spectrum AR631 which is a fantastic receiver. It comes with AS3X technology and safe technology. This is a gyro and that's going to make the aircraft a lot easier to fly and it also is good for beginners and we're going to talk more about that later on in the video. And the transmitter that we're pairing up with the Spitfire is the Spectrum NX8 radio and that is a fantastic choice to go along with this plane because this plane is a six channel aircraft meaning it has control over the ailerons, elevator, rudder, throttle, flaps and gear but it might be useful to have a seventh channel so you can switch safe on and off which is that flight stabilization not allowing you to roll upside down and I'm going to go over all the radio settings that I have with the NX8 radio at the end of this video. Now this plane has beautiful elliptical wings that are going to help reduce drag and increase performance. And these massive wings are attached to the fuselage with four screws making for easy transportation. The flaps are split flaps just like the real thing and we have them set for takeoff at 40 degrees and landing flaps will be 87 degrees as per the manual. There is so much scale detail when it comes to this aircraft. There's the antennas, the exhaust, the cannons, and even navigation lines. And it's also got a canopy that you can slide back and put in an FPV system. It does come with the servos and stuff required for your FPV, just doesn't have the camera. We're gonna go ahead and put in our Insta360 GO 2 camera for some epic, epic FPV footage. All the control surfaces are hinged and the control links are hidden, adding to that scale detail and realism. It also has flap indicators that work okay, although when I have flaps completely up, the indicator still is sitting up a little bit, indicating as though I do have some flap out. Finally, looking at the undercarriage, of course, it's inherently unstable on the ground. It does mean it is a little bit harder to taxi. The main gears are retractable and you will notice I don't have the gear covers on those main landing gears and that might be because maybe I had a few bad landings and broke them off earlier on. If you do want to know more about this plane, remember we're going to have it linked in the description box down below if you're interested. Anyway, that's enough talking Joe. Let's head to the park and see what the Spitfire has got. Here we are on location at the beautiful Canterbury Park with the beautiful Avios Spitfire 1.45 meter wingspan. It is awesome. We've got all kinds of cameras on there giving us all kinds of angles. This video is going to be epic. Watch to the end and I'll tell you something. Quick disclaimer. When I was getting this plane prepped and getting all the cameras on there, there was a little crack inside the fuselage. Just under where this wing joins, tail in the front, there's quite a big bend going on. So I'm a little nervous. I mean, this plane might break it in the mid, mid air. Hopefully not. Point too much G's, <laughs> and then I'll lose all this camera gear, and we'll lose so much stuff. So do us a huge favor, smash that like button because it really does help out the channel. So we've got a few batteries today. We're going to be running it on this 5,000 milliamp Turnergy LiPo battery, 70 to 150C discharge. This thing is enormous, and it's probably the biggest that you're going to fit inside this battery tray. So the CFG range is these two dots here. Basically, with this size battery, if I keep it all the way up as far forward as it possibly can go, it should be pretty much right on those CFG limits, maybe more towards the front. Camera mounting system that we're using, Velcro on both of these, so hopefully they stay on there. And then that is the mount that comes with Insta360 GO 2. We're gonna have all these cameras linked in the description down below if you're interested. This one even says, born for RC fanatics. And of course, we're running the Spectrum NX8 radio. Really loving this radio, really am. I watched the full 18 chapters on the Spectrum YouTube uh, channel on the couch there the other day so I got a good idea on how this whole thing works so look at this currently in direct law 
we don't want that. We want a little bit of help. We're going to alternate law. You like that? And normal law. You like that? That's, the, that's, the, that's for the Airbus pilots out there. We're on alternate law, so we're going to get, uh, we, that's basically AS3X, but no safe. For rates, I'm running um, mid rates, which is actually the high rates that says in the manual. I do have a higher setting. Throttle cuts on. I'm a little bit nervous, Sid. I'm a little nervous. I, I don't like flying the Spitfire in windy conditions. It's actually harder than the jet. There we go. See that? See that? See those controls, see that little dance? That means safe, we have safe, but we're not using safe, all right, relax, okay? But I'm doing the real thing here, man. I'm a fly the plane. Is that a good idea? I'm a fly the plane. <laughs> safe is great if you're starting off, if you're beginning, but I think uh, once you've got a bit of skill, you want to have fun, you want to take it out of safe and go into alternate law. That is just too cool, man. You've got the instrument panel down there. I mean, come on, but in there, it oh, is just cool. awesome. So now we're going to close the hatch, check this out. Oh. Oh, oh, look at that! Looks like the real thing! That is way too cool, man. With the G-Force, I'm worried about G-Force. It's going to bend that uh, mount in, inside the cockpit. You're going to be looking at the sky. The, the Velcro is not going to hold up. <laughs> these these uh, orange $100 cameras are going to fall off. And I'm worried about the tail snapping off during some high G maneuvers. Could be interesting. So, I've got six minutes for the 3300 milliamp. We've got a 5000, so I push function. I set that up for timer. And then I can go timer two. And we're going to go ahead and inhibit that we can go timer one and we can set that to count now so we've got nine minutes oh look at that nine juicy minutes of hell for this plane <laughs> okay take off flaps all right bravo mike india wind zero six zero degrees 50 knots gusting 70 runway zero three zero clear for takeoff clear for takeoff bravo mike india Where we are! Uh -huh. Where we are! Uh -huh. <laughs> and a very scale takeoff that was, wasn't it? That was very <laughs> I'm gonna cool. come real close by us, Amber. You tell me when to raise the gear, okay? Coming in, I'm coming in. Tell me when you want the gear up. Uh, gear up. Gear up. Now. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, flap <laughs> up! Let's go have some fun! <laughs> Oh man, this is way too much fun, RC planes, especially this beautiful Spitfire. I'm coming in for a glide, throttle is zero, just the prop is windmilling. Here we go, coming right past us here, Amber. Oh, and so full cool. throttle, right up. Look at that, you can go vertical. Into the roll, coming back around, throttle's off, another pass. Got a bit of a tail on this time, throttle up. Oh man, this plane is just beautiful looking in the sky. It's enormous too, isn't it, Amber? It is, yeah. Okay, let's uh, do a bit of a loop. We're going to come back around. All right, ready? I'm going to go up. And here we go. Oh no, oh, that was a bit crooked. <laughs> right, we'll try that again. And we'll try that again. I'm still nervous at this, all right, guys? Relax. And going up. Bring the throttle back. Coming out of the loop. Woo, check it out. Uh, now, I'm, gonna, I'm about to do an insane maneuver, okay? My friend, who's an aerobatic instructor, told me, I forgot the name, but we're gonna do it right now. Check this out. Get it! Oh, look at that! Oh, isn't that awesome? Oh, I don't even know the name of it. It's a Russian. It was a Russian name. It's a Russian name. I'll do it again. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes! My friend's gonna be proud. He can't even do that in the RC plane. <laughs> you can do it in the real plane, though. <laughs> right, ready? We're gonna do some inverted flight. I'm gonna bring it back around. Here we go. Yeah, you got that, you got that? Oh, what's up, what's up? Hey, hey, I'm upside down. <laughs> oh, check that out, man. All right, we'll do a knife edge in a minute. I'm gonna come back, I find knife edge easier coming from right to left. Oh, oh, you getting that? Oh, oh, I mean, I'm gonna climb a little bit, probably a bit too much right of there, but I got something. I got a bit of a knife edge going on. Oh, this thing's too cool. All right, now I'm gonna do some, uh, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a fast pass this time. Just, just let me get set up here. Okay, so, oh, this is gonna be with a headwind. We want a tailwind. So we're gonna come back around. I'm gonna do a close pass. Beauty, beauty, you get that? Yeah. Okay, ready? Oh, I don't, I didn't pull out too, I don't wanna do too many Gs here, guys. That's full throttle, full throttle. Whoa, whoa, man, look into the vertical. 
Roll. Oh, beautiful. Oh. This plane, guys. They're actually quite good. The first time I saw Joe fly this, he flew it into, what was it the first time? Uh, flew it into a soccer post. I flew it into a My house. Bush. <laughs> so, you know. But with the AS3X technology, having that Spectrum receiver in here has definitely made it easy to fly. And in this wind, and this is windy, guys. <laughs> it's not too bad. Okay, this time we're gonna go for a slow pass. I got takeoff flaps. I'm coming in nice and slow. Oh, it's just going a bit gusty there. Oh, we've got the 70 knots going on here. Oh, oh it's going to be a hard landing, guys. This could be an interesting landing, but check it out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, away with the flaps. Well, how much time have I got left? I've got two minutes left. Two minutes to perform something. We're going to do that maneuver again. We're going way up, way up. That was a bit different that time. Still turn. Still turn, uh, kind of, yeah, there we go. There's a bit of still turn. Oh, I want to see that onboard footage must look epic, man. Do another still turn, it's time to the left. Can I get it? Yeah, there we go. In the glide. Props were milling, bring it up throttle. This time we're coming in for a practice approach. I need the practice. I'm gonna use one stage of flat for landing just cause it is a bit gusty and that's what it recommends in the manual and that's also what I understand. All right, bring the throttle down a bit, about 40%. Are you landing or just... Flaps coming down. That's the Pratt's approach. Gears coming down. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, bring the throttle back up. Oh. That was that was pretty, that was bad. Here we go. Just doing a pass there. That's not a, I was just doing a slow pass. Right? I was doing a dirty pass. That's what I was doing. I was doing the dirty pass. All right, this time we're going to go for the landing, Amber. Downwind. Get the gear down. The gear is down. Yes, always land into it. I'm on base leg. I'm lowering one stage of flat. Probably going to stay there for landing. You're going to see what might happen, the prop. I've been struggling with the tail dragger landings, man. Harder than the jet, I tell you. Oh, coming in the middle. Ooh. 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 Oh, Amber. Ooh. I just want to get it touching down close to us. I'm sort of flying it all the way over here. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yes. Woo. <laughs> I've only done a few landings where the plane hasn't actually toppled over and I've had the uh, the nose into the ground, believe it or not. But uh, I'll take that landing. I love it. This plane is awesome. It's time to chuck that 3600 milliamp battery in there now. 3300 milliamp battery. All right, we now have the 3300 milliamp battery. <laughs> it's cold, isn't it? Keep your hands in your pockets. Throttle cutters off. We're in alternate law. And we have six minutes on the clock. Oh, Full uh, back pressure. It's quite hard to taxi these. Bravo Mike, India. Wind, zero, five, zero degrees, 100 knots, gusting 120. Woo! Runway, zero, three, zero, clip take off. Clip take off. Bravo Mike, India. Throttle cuts off. There we go. And up we go. Gear is up. We've got a dog coming after it. It's all good. <laughs> Flaps up. Once again, I forgot to check how secure those cameras are. Oh, it feels like it, it definitely can notice when it's being lighter. All right, coming down, Amber. All right. Make sure you're a manual focus. I am. Here we go. Just a just a moderate, nothing crazy. 50% throttle. It's into wind. Just want a nice close shot again. Going up. Get a bit of a roll go. Here we go. Up to the vertical. Maneuver time. Whoa, that went nuts. It was awesome. epic. In the glide. Do we still have the cameras? I think we do. I can't see. I hope so. Neither can I. I'm starting to have some doubt. Throttle's off. Coming in back into a glide. Bringing flap out. We'll go full flap. Throttle's off. Kind of real slow. Bring the throttle up. We've got a bit of drag now. You see the AS3X working a little bit? That might be me working as well. Oh man, it's like almost stopped out of the air. Flaps, up. Flaps away. Coming back around. This time, inverted. There we go. I'm staying inverted here, guys. Oh! Oh, hello! Hello there. So cool. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Inverted flight does it well. This camera Out doesn't zoom enough. That's okay, we will eventually guys get a new camera. The beast of a camera. But right now, 
We've got all kinds of different cameras going on there. And how's that flight time looking? We've got a few minutes left. <laughs> Is it cold? Sophie's stuff? enjoying it. She wanted to watch the plane fly today. How many circles do you want Daddy to do in the sky? Well, let's see how many we can do. There's two. <laughs> there's three. There's four. We'll, we'll pull out of that one there. Sophie said 12. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time. Maybe with the jet. All right, this time we're going to come in for some slow flight again, right in front of us. We've got the light battery. She's going to get a little bit slower. Um, but am I capable? I don't know. We're going to go right down. We're going to do the same as before. See if I can get it even closer this time. Now you got to be careful here, guys. It could be prone to a wing drop. The center pressure is moving closer to the fuselage with those flaps out. That means it's a lot more unstable. And what does that mean? Well, at any instant, if you get too slow, it could wing drop. So you be careful there, flying slow. That's why, especially when I get new planes, I do tend to come in at quite a high approach speed. I don't like to fly too slow, especially in the turn, especially turning base, turning final. I don't like to get too slow because that's where you really risk uh, stalling the plane. Especially it's hard to, you know, know if you're in balance or not in your turns, how much rudder is, are you using? This has got a rudder mix, which means the rudder moves a little bit with the ailerons, which is helping keep the plane in balance. But that's only going to be correct for one particular speed. Other times it's probably completely out of balance. Here we go, that's, that's with rudder. <laughs> the rudder that's taped on at the top, doing all kinds of random tricks up there. It might be almost time, what are we at? We've got three minutes left. Time for another knife edge. Ready? So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, we got a vibration. So I set up vibrations for G limits. I should get a vibe if I'm hitting, I think 6G. Surely that wasn't 6Gs. I'm not even sure if it's set up properly, but I got a vibe. I got the vibe. You got Cameras the vibe. are still on. Right, uh, we got two minutes left. Wow, this is going forever. Oh, we were in takeoff flaps. Flaps are up, we're now clean. That's probably why I wasn't knife edging very well. Ready? That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> oh, still, still, a bit, still sitting a little bit there. I don't... The wind's picked up again now. All right. Okay, we're going to come in for an approach now, guys. Gears down. One stage of flap. Do we try full flap? I don't know. That's I scary. Don't know. I'm going to try and have a nicer approach this time. I'm not too sure about this one. Uh, no, that's good. That's good. Looking all right. Doing it too slow here. Oh. Looks like it's coming towards us. That's a okay, it's okay. More than it should be. Oh. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's not too bad. We'll take that one. Whoa, we're way too close. Not another prop strike. We got I think a little bit closer to us. Hopefully you saw that on the camera. Guys, the Avios Spitfire 1.45 meter wingspan from Hobby King. It is an awesome plane. I know it's been around for a while. But boy, if you don't have one and you're into RC planes and you love your warbirds, this is the one to get when it comes to Spitfires. Guys, I'm pretty sure you can tell from this video that Joe absolutely loves this Spitfire and hopefully in a short amount of time, I will be flying this thing. Yeah, well with that safe select enabled onto this plane, I'm sure you have no issues at all once you get this thing up in the air and flying it around. And that video will be coming later on, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that. But man, this plane is just epic and it's so much fun to fly. And what I love about it is that it is a bit challenging to fly, I actually find this harder to fly than the FMS F-18 that we have and especially coming into land when it's a little bit windy, a little bit gusty, it does make things a lot more challenging but that's all part of the fun and that's what's going to make you a better pilot overall. Now as promised I'm going to go over the radio and all our settings so if you don't want to stick around for that you can click out of the video now and go watch maybe our T28 uh, video that's great for beginners, a lot of fun. Uh, Amber's been doing some training and flying and that, her video will be coming soon for that one. Or go check out our jet video. It's an awesome video, I reckon. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but it's a lot of fun. That thing, we've had go over 200 kilometers an hour. So make sure you go check out that video now. But for those of you that want to stick around and watch the uh, my radio settings, let's get into that now. So here we have the NX8 radio by Spectrum. And I have to say, this is the best transmitter that I've ever used for an RC plane. And I've had a few, including the DX6, which is also a fantastic choice. But now with the newer generation and having eight channels, I would definitely 
go for this one. So I'm gonna start off by just going straight to how I built the model. So go ahead and hit your scroll key that takes you to the function list and we can go all the way down to system setup. So for model select, of course I have it there. So you would have created a new model. I have the Avia Spitfire 1.45 meter. For model type, of course it's an aero or aircraft. Model name, put in the model name, very straightforward. Aircraft type, this has one aileron, one flap, and it is normal. Now, some people like myself did get confused and I thought it was two ailerons, one flap, but because you have one aileron going into the receiver, you have one aileron and then one flap. So flight modes, we'll talk about that a little bit shortly. Spoken flight modes, I have that all set up. I have the audio, so all these settings that I have, you would have heard in the video when I lowered gear, it would tell me I've lowered gear. When I've lowered flap, it told me what flap I'd lowered and that is extremely useful. I don't know how many times I've taken off and you know gone to raise flap and I've actually lowered landing flap. So, and this has told me and immediately I rectified it. So that is really, really handy to have. Then the next setting that's worth talking about that I use during the setup Oh, trainer mode is really helpful if you have a friend or your partner wants to get into the hobby and you have two Spectrum radios. We're using trainer mode right now for Amber on the T28 Trojan by eFlight. Uh, she's using the DX6 radio and you can wirelessly connect these two radios together. While she's flying, I'm holding down the bind button. As soon as I release this button, I immediately have control. And that's oh, that's saved the plane a few times, but it's definitely helping Amber build up her confidence. Palette settings, so the new NX lineup, you can change using different color settings for the radio. I find this the best to be flying with. It's just nice and bright and good when you wanna briefly look down and see how much better time you've got left on the timer. And finally, you have Wi-Fi settings. Now this is great, you connect to your Wi-Fi and then you can update your radio wirelessly. That's been useful, very handy. Uh, but that's basically it for your setup system. Once you've done that, you've created the basic model for your Spitfire. Now we've gone back to the main screen and we can see we've got our Spitfire picture that you would have selected during your model setup. Go ahead and click the scroll wheel and you can go through here and you've got servo setup. So in this case, these are the travels that I've found work for me. Yours might be slightly different. Now for the flap, you'll notice there's quite a big difference there from the default 100. Now I did change the uh, connection from the control or the push rod to your control horn for the uh, flap servo. So it was on the last circle, the last hole on that control horn. Uh, or sorry, servo horn, it was on the last uh, circle. I now put it into the middle. I've put it in the middle, and that's because I did have a little bit of asymmetry in my flaps, and that helped reduce the amount of asymmetry I had. And it did take me all day to get these settings dialed in, but now I have the settings dialed in quite nicely for the flap on the second circle on the servo horn with these travels. You'll see I increased the elevator travel slightly. That's giving me more control deflection, and that's something that I need when on the ground taxiing around. I had to set up some reverse, you might not have to, just make sure that when you do your control check, check that everything's going in the correct direction. If it isn't, this is where you would come to uh, reverse those servos. Now for expo and D rates. So I fly on what they call their high rates. I've set it up with the F switch because I have three flight modes. I have low rates, low rates mid rates, mid -rates high rate, so you can see I've also got that with the audio. So for low rates, you can see quite uh, low there, 35% on the ailerons and Expo 15%. Now that's working great uh, if you if it's, if the plane feels a little bit too sensitive for you and that will basically be exactly the settings that they want uh, as per the instruction manual if you're using a Spectrum setup like I am. The elevator, 50%, Expo 15, this is still for low rates, rudder 50% and 15% for Expo. So if we go to mid rates, this is what I've been flying on today and this is what I'll keep flying on. This is what I found works good. Uh, rate 75% on the rudder, Expo 15%, elevator 105% rate, Expo 15% and uh, finally aileron 60%, Expo 10%. Those ailerons do have a lot of deflection if you're at 100%. And high rates, I haven't even tried these rates yet, so something I will try later. This is uh, giving quite a lot of deflection, more than the instruction manual suggests, so just be aware you might over stress the aircraft flying around 
in, high, in these high rate settings at high speeds. So mid rates has been working well for us today. Of course, you wanna make sure you set throttle cut. It's one of the first things you also do after setting up your model. Throttle curve, I've done nothing there. Uh, for flap system, I have a slight bit of elevated deflection, minus five of, of uh, takeoff flaps, minus 10 with landing flaps. That seems to be working reasonably well for me. For the mix, I have mix on for the aileron and rudder. Now with timer, this is really cool. So you would have noticed in this screen here, we've got 3300 milliamps, six minutes. Well, I can go ahead and go function and I've set that up for timer and I can change. So if I'm running a 5,000 milliamp battery, in this case, it looks like I've got the keys there wrong. Uh, you can go ahead and disable timer two or inhibit and I can go to timer one and enable this for countdown and it's nine minutes. So the reason this is really useful is because you might forget when you go ahead and you go out to the field to fly and you've got 5,000, you've got two different size batteries, it can be very easy to forget what the other battery is. So in this case, I've got a name 5,000, so I know that's the nine minute uh, battery. And then for timer two, I know that my 3,300 is six minutes. And you can see it's showing 5,000 in nine minutes. So there we have the basic setup for your Avios Spitfire. This will get you up and going, but we have not yet covered the AS3X and Safe Select. For that, I'm going to refer you to the Spectrum YouTube channel where they have 18 chapters of videos where you can sit back, relax, and enjoy to learn how to set up the AS3X and Safe Select. What I will tell you is that I am using the default gains for the AS3X. Uh, and I do have that put up, uh, set up with this channel here, and I was flying today with it at about 50% gains. If you noticed um, it still wasn't flying very stably, you might wanna try increasing that, but as soon as you see the plane oscillating around, that means you've given it too much gain, and then you just come back just a little bit just to back off it when you see no oscillation. That is about right for your aircraft and on that particular day. Uh, I also set up safe select or flight modes, which I showed you in the video. So flight mode one, flight mode one we were in direct law, that is just raw. Flight mode, two. flight mode two, that is alternate law, that is just AS3X. Flight mode, three. flight mode three, that is in safe mode. So I have bank limitations as well. And that is how Amber will learn how to fly the Avios Spitfire. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a like anyway. Make sure you're staying safe out there on your RC adventures. I'm Joe. And I'm Amber. We're the RC Kiwis, <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.